A question that often worries many people is, is it okay to crack your joints? Is it okay to crack your own spine? Many people like to do some kind of movement. Usually men like it, they do it like this. Like this, crack, crack. To one side and then to the other side. At the same time, they hear a cracking sound. They also like to crack the neck. And after that, they feel good. After that, their back relaxes, their neck relaxes. Because all the vertebrae went back into place. So they put their vertebrae back into place. Before that, they were out of place, but now they put them back. In other words, they corrected the displacement. Somehow a displacement had formed and they fixed it themselves. That's what is believed. Hold your hand out in front of you like this so you can see it. You can put it on the table and start bending and straightening your hand. Then bend it again, like this, then straighten it and bend it again. This is the elbow joint, and it has the ability, you see, to bend and straighten. Here, in the spine, there are also joints. Besides the well-known disc, because everyone is concerned about hernias, but there are also joints in the spine, just like this elbow joint that can move, bend, and straighten. So, in the spine, there are joints that also have their own specific movement. They can also bend and straighten. In some places they can rotate, and in some places we can tilt thanks to the movement of these joints. And each joint has two edges. For example, when you bend your arm, you see, it doesn't go any further. When you straighten it, it also doesn't go any further. The joint can't move any further than that. And if you start making some kind of movement... From this position, you can see the range of motion I have, right? I can extend it here. See how much range of motion I have. And if I start the movement back from here, from point A to point B, here's point B. It's right here. I have a huge range of motion. See how big it is, but if... I want to move not toward point A, but toward point, for example, point C. It's right here. Point C is located here. So I already have a small range of motion here. So if I start the movement from here, I can do a lot. But if I start from here, it doesn't go any further. And if my point is this one, here's point A. If it is not here, but right here, 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 in this place, the range of motion gets smaller. From here, see how long the movement is. From here, from the middle, it is smaller. And if I start from here, it's even smaller. It does not go any further. And at the end of the movement, I'll feel here. The movement is over. And at the end of this movement, besides feeling the end of the movement in the joint, if I want to go further for some reason. So I've reached the end of the joint. And let's say, well, I'm tired of my elbow joint. I kind of want to replace it with a titanium one over time. And then I've reached the end of the joint's movement, and I'm trying to push the movement even further with force. At this moment, my muscles will tense up, making exactly the maximum effort that bodybuilders need, really feeling how the muscles tense up as much as possible. When I reach this point, when I reach the edge, this very edge, I've reached it, and right here my muscles will tense up as much as possible. Because I give them the command and my muscle is as strongly contracted as possible because it's trying to overcome this bone barrier. Why is it needed? I want to create even more range of motion and I tense my muscles as much as possible for this. I push one bone against another and that still doesn't stop me. My muscles tense up even more. 
I feel the muscle tension right here. But I still want to go further, further, further. I want to keep this movement going. We did this with the arm, right? That's all clear. Now you can do the same thing, for example, with your neck. So you start turning your head, right? If you turn your head without moving your shoulder blade, you'll also hit this limit. If you try to force the movement further, you'll have a similar situation. So what exactly is happening? That is, at the moment when you've reached this position, if you repeat all of this many times, eventually you'll create additional range of motion for yourself. That is, you'll add a little bit right here. That is, your elbow used to extend like this before. But if you're a persistent person, you can increase your range of motion and create that range of motion for yourself. But if that doesn't stop you, and for some reason you want to go even further to increase your range of motion even more, you can use the same principle. Create maximum effort at the edge of your movement and gradually increase it even further so that your arm can extend in the other direction. That is, for example, to this kind of angle. Yes, it will hurt, of course. Everything here will be tearing, constantly getting injured but you will gradually achieve your goal. The same thing happens in the spine. That is, if you make a turn and feel that the movement doesn't go any further, that's it, it doesn't go any further. Such people often have the urge to crack that spot. There's a vertebra there that's out of place. It needs to be put back. It's not in the right position, that's what's stopping them, or it's blocked there. It doesn't let them turn this way. So, during the turn, they've already reached the maximum of their movement. They've done it. The turn is finished, they've hit the limit of their motion. It doesn't go any further, and that's when you feel that it won't go any further. But if you try to push it more and more, keep adding movement in that direction, eventually, it will go there. For a while, that person will feel better. They always request these manipulations. That is, he is already in this turn. Here he is, in this turn, and he starts moving. But he starts moving not from here, but always from here, and he doesn't have enough range of motion to get here, and he keeps asking to add more movement for him, to do a little manipulation for him there, to loosen this joint. The range of motion increases and helps temporarily, but the issue returns, starting from the very edge here. But you can't endlessly increase this movement because the vertebra starts to wobble like this, and that's exactly how the disc gets injured, and the joint too, because it's loose. So, the principle is the same. Very often, the problem isn't that the movement in the joint is limited, but that the starting point of the movement isn't in the middle, but, for example, already very close to the edge of this movement. With the spine, the difficulty is, when it comes to the arm, everything is clear. Very few people move like this, right? But with the spine, a lot of people do it this way. Because here you have the pelvis, and its position will determine which direction the rotation will be easier. So if initially your pelvis is positioned in such a way that, for example, the left half of the pelvis is in front, and the right half is behind, like this, right? Then, naturally, the rotation in this direction will be freer. There will be more range of motion this way than rotating in the other direction, because the range of motion that way is smaller. These are the kinds of life situations we have these days.